All right, well, uh, we are into week three, uh, and I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, based on talking to the teams that I talked to around the state, um, I'd say uh, a lot of our teams are kind of wrapping up their prototyping and uh, their kind of idea phases, and they're, uh, they're hitting the cat hard. And in some cases, they're beginning to manufacture, fabricate parts, um, assemble uh, drivetrains. Um, things like that. So uh, hopefully that's about where you guys are too. Um, and, uh, and it's going well. Uh, always remember if you got any questions, if you, um, if there's a, a nearby team that you'd like to be connected to, you're not sure how to get a hold of them, uh, you can um, email me and then I can, I can send an email and, and get you connected to folks uh, in case you needed uh, some shared equipment um, or find out, you know, people have practice fields. Uh, some of that information is going to be coming out in the mentor update email. So be watching that. Uh, I am going to start posting. Um, teams have been sending me uh, information about field accessibility. So, uh, so be on the lookout on those mentor update down towards the bottom. There'll be some information about who has what, like half field, full field, when it's available, how to contact the people, uh, where it's located. Uh, and then you guys should be able to go from there. All right. So. This is registering youth for FRC. And this is a cumbersome process that, uh, and I'm not gonna beat around the bush about that. Um, in years past, we were able to accept paper copies of these, we aren't anymore. And so uh, you're gonna need to make sure that your students are doing this through the dashboard, through the First Inspires website. Uh, this process is a little bit easier if your students are 18. Uh, so if they're a senior and they're 18 years old, they don't necessarily have to do the process that I'm going to describe tonight. They can just kind of go through as if they're the parent and do this themselves. Um, but if, in fact, if they're 18, uh, the first website won't let a parent register them. So they have to actually register themselves. Uh, now that doesn't have anything to do with your school. That's the first stuff. So uh, students under the age of 18, Parents need to start the process. So the students actually don't create an account on the first website, the parents do. So first step is the parent needs to go to firstinspires.org. They need to sign up, if, if they haven't already, uh, they need to sign up for an account. And this is true for your mentors as well. Uh, if, if you have a mentor who's joined the team, uh, who's working with your students, who's going to be coming to our events, they need to get an account. Uh, they also need to uh, be invited by you to the team, and they need to go through the Youth Protection Program. Uh, but that's a conversation for another day. So students, parents then need to go through, once they set up their account, they're going to fill out this page. There is information on how to get help. So if the parents get stuck, uh, they can call team support. Uh, customer service, and they can get help and get walkthrough uh, information on how to complete this uh, process. Uh, the hours and everything are right there. My audio. Hey. Hello. All right. So they fill out this information, then they register. That gives them an account. Once they have an account, they'll log in and they'll have a dashboard, just like you will as a mentor, or lead mentor. Of course, they can't see as much stuff, uh, but they will have on this screen where it says my teams, right over here, it'll say parent slash guardian youth. That's where they're gonna live. That's where they're gonna go. They're gonna go there and they're gonna add a youth. And I used my dashboard here as an example, so you can see my son who was in robotics. Uh, he's 20, so he's no longer in robotics. So when you add a youth, it's gonna go through this youth profile. Uh, the parents are gonna enter on all this information, the youth's name, address, um, country, zip code, um, and then uh, there's some demographic information they're gonna ask birth date, et cetera. 
And here's a closer look at the demographic information, birth date, gender, um, race. Now, they actually don't have to answer those. There is a, uh, in the drop down. there is a prefer not to answer uh, option on those. Okay. So then past program participation, this is where they would plug in uh, if the student had participated in any of our previous programs. So First Lego League Junior, FLL, FTC. Uh, first is just trying to get information on, on these kids to see who has uh, experience or who's new to FRC. So they would fill out of this information, click next. Next, they're gonna get to school information. So if the, uh, if the child is homeschooled, there's an option for that under the school dropdown. So, and they're gonna pull that school information based on the demographic information from above. So when they put in that they're from, uh, you know, from Kokomo, Indiana, or you know, West Lafayette or whatever, uh, that Indiana, will kick in this drop down here. And so then it'll only be Indiana schools that'll be on this drop down list. They'll find the school. And again, if they're homeschooled, that is an option that says homeschool. Current grade in school as of September 1st. Uh, and then if they're eligible for free or reduced lunch. Uh, again, first is trying to track some of this information for demographic purposes. They don't have to answer that question. There was an option there to say I'd prefer not to answer. Okay. So now, uh, here's what it sort of looks like. I filled this stuff out um, after they choose their school. It's gonna ask, is it a public private, current grade, when they're graduating, uh, if they're eligible for free or just lunch. You'll notice some uh, redacted information there with the blue squares, um, but that's what the form will look like. Uh, going through some of this kind of quickly because uh, this is just pretty, basic information. Here's where we're gonna kind of get into, is slow down a little bit, okay? So the consent and release, and this is what this is really all about. When they initially sign their student up to participate, they will only see the first consent and release form. So that's the first headquarters consent and release. Here, because we're in a district, they have two consent and release forms that they have to have checked off on here. So when they initially register their student, they will only see the first one. They'll scroll down and they'll accept the consent and release. And as they scroll down to the bottom of that window, they have to actually physically scroll that uh, window down. Then all of a sudden it'll give them this option to accept, and by clicking accept, that's as good as their signature, okay? Now, they have to apply. So now that they've registered the student to first, they have to apply to be on a team. So they're gonna to apply to be on your team. And under the youth profile, they will go ahead and click first robotics competition, the team number, so they're gonna need that, uh, I think some of us take it for granted that everybody knows uh, our team numbers and people know what team number. If, don't take it for granted. So if you're sending your kids home to fill this stuff out, make sure your kids know their team number, um, especially rookie teams. Uh, that might not be a thing yet for your team. Uh, your team might just know themselves by their name. Um, so make sure your students know what their team number is. Right? And that's that four digit number that you've been assigned. That is going to become a part of your permanent identity, right, as you move forward. So after you enter the number, it should populate the information about that team right here. You'll click apply. So now you'll get a confirmation page saying you've applied, you're registered. Now the lead or alternate mentor will get notified that there's a new application that a student is applied to be on the team. Then that lead mentor, you guys, will accept or decline that student, right? Then if they decline the student, then the, we're done, right? But in this case, you're gonna accept them onto the team. We're not done because once they're accepted onto the team, now the parents have to 
log back into their account. They have to go back to their dashboard. And this is what it looks like here on their dashboard once, once they've applied to the team and they're waiting the mentor approval. This is what it looks like. It'll say pending coach. Okay, so now once the lead mentor has accepted the student onto the team, their dashboard will look like this and they'll have the student there. And they'll need to go to youth options. And under youth options, they will select youth consent and release. And just a side note, by the way, this PDF file send out to you all. I've sent it out a couple times and, and it's actually on the Indiana First website, but I'll send it all again to you tonight. Um, so they'll select youth consent and release. And then here's where it's a little weird. So when they get there, they're gonna see the first headquarters consent and release form, but they're also gonna see this little triangle. They're gonna click on that and it's gonna collapse all that information about the first consent and release. Because down here at the bottom, you'll see on the bottom of the page, they will see 2019 <laughs> Indiana first consent and release form. They will click that. And then the Indiana first consent and release form will appear. They'll be able to scroll to the bottom. And once they scroll to the bottom, they'll be able to click accept. Once they click accept, they're done. And you should be able then in your dashboard as a mentor, you should be able to see your roster and you should be able to see whose uh, consent and release forms have been signed, uh, have been accepted. But it's gonna be important that both of these are accepted because when they get, when you bring your roster to our events, to your first district event, we'll have the records of whether or not the CNRs have been signed. And if they haven't, then the student can't participate. And it has to be done online. Now, some of you might uh, be at a school and on a school-based team, and that's great because you might have a, a computer lab and maybe you get your parents in one night uh, and you set up the computers and you can help, help walk them through that. Maybe you're not a school-based team and maybe you have some students who uh, struggle or maybe they don't have access to the internet at home. Um, you could uh, talk to your local library and see if there's a night where you could um, have the parents come in and meet at the local library and you as a team could meet there and um, have four or five computers set up uh, to do that. Libraries love to do things like that. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways that you could do this in terms of, of getting parents who might not have access or who have computer access, but honestly, might struggle with this. They're not tech savvy, uh, and I completely understand that. Uh, but you can, you will also have a copy of this PDF file uh, so that you can share this with your parents um, and walk them through this. Uh, and uh, and so just be prepared to explain to them that it's going to be a two-step process. That it's not a, apply, you're done, and you're accepted. It's once they're accepted, then they have to go back in uh, in phase two. So make sure you're communicating this with your parents. Um, if you guys are using an email blast system or a text-based system uh, like Remind or something like that, uh, some way to get out the information because uh, this is gonna be important. Again, FIRST has told us uh, this year we are no longer allowed to accept the paper. Uh, and so that's been put on us. And so we're gonna have to be the bad guys, um, but what we can do right now is help you guys as much as possible on the front end. So that's how to register a youth. It was pretty fast. Um, again, we've got the, um, uh, we've got the chat open. 
but also um, I can unmute you guys, um, go through and unmute people here. Um, are there any questions? I was just going to sort of tag on with uh, one of the things Chris was saying there. We did on, on Channel Robotics last season, we had an, a parent meeting. We got all the parents together for parent meeting stuff anyways, but we also took them into a computer lab and just had everybody go through and do it right then and there. We could kind of walk everybody through it. Um, we also had the team account open. So as soon as people applied, we could accept them. We could go do the second half of it right away. Um, it, it stinks. It's painful. It hurts. It's arduous. It's terrible. But doing it as a big group is, has a bit of a cathartic value to it. So um, that, that worked really well. Um, we didn't have to go chasing things down for a whole bunch of time. Um, so that, that, would, that was something that worked, worked well. Okay. Yeah, thanks. I know other teams do that too. They, they'll have mandatory parent meetings. I think a mandatory parent meeting, if you've never done one before as a team, uh, highly recommend uh, regular uh, parent meetings. Uh, it's a great way to make sure the parents understand uh, the, a lot of the things that go on with this. It's a great way to put information in front of your parents, budgets, uh, you know, here's how much this thing is costing us. Um, you know, if you're not, if, if you guys are meeting on Saturdays during build season, you're trying to figure out how to feed the kids. Hopefully you've got some parents who are, you know, taking turns. Uh, you can use tools like Sign Up Genius or just, you know, old school paper uh, signups for, you know, spaghetti one Saturday, tacos one Saturday, a potato bar one Saturday, you know, stuff that's easy to make mass amounts of. And, and so hopefully you're, you're meeting with your parents regularly anyway. Uh, those, if you look at the organizations in your schools or in your communities uh, that are youth-based that are really successful and sustainable, marching bands, show choirs, you know, the athletic programs, it's because they've got their parents engaged. Uh, and, and not only that, but they also, uh, those of you out there probably have had kids doing things maybe, uh, if not, get ready. Anytime you sign your kid up for something uh, anymore, uh, they've, got, they've gotten really savvy. They've said, by the way, part of signing up for this is that you as a parent have to log so many hours of, of volunteer time. You have to work the concession stand or you have to help at a tournament. So uh, don't be afraid to, to make that a part of participation for your student. Is, it, is that a parent, guardian, someone, uh, that is related to that student that's responsible for that student is going to show up and, and do something and not just, you know, drive by each night. Um, so, yeah. Any other questions or anything else? We've got about 10 minutes left on the call. Um, so if, if you guys do have any, it could be registration concerns. It could be other, um, uh, we, you know, we've got a couple of veterans um, on the call tonight. Um, so if you, if you have any other questions or concerns, Great time to just kind of open forum, ask away, and don't hesitate to use the chat feature on Zoom. Wow, great. So it sounds like everybody's got a fully functional, well-built robot ready to go. Um, ha, 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 ha. Um, I'm just trying to think of anything else. Uh, tonight, this was really the main focus of the call. Uh, if you are a NASA team, um, I did find out uh, there have been some questions uh, about NASA teams, if they need to have NASA logos on the robots. Um, I heard back, uh, you do not have to put a NASA logo on your robot, so you won't be getting any stickers or anything like that from NASA. Um, but if you want to, you're more than welcome to. They said that they appreciate that kind of stuff. So, but you can just go online and, and find a logo and, and make a sticker for yourself. Uh, you will be getting a banner uh, at, um, at the, uh, your first event to display in your pits. So you will be getting that. Uh, but then they do ask, uh, one thing they do ask for sure is that as lead mentor uh, in your dashboard, um, you can officially go in to your dashboard and list your sponsors you are asked to please list NASA as a sponsor in your dashboard. If you're not sure, um, I don't have leader alternate mentor access, so I can't show you uh, how to do that, uh, but you can call team support 
and they can walk you through it. Um, and they can say, click here, click there uh, to find where you list your sponsors. Uh, but please make sure that you're also listing other sponsors in there. Uh, one of the things that we'll do at events, uh, at, at our FRC events, is the first time you take the field for competition and your team is introduced, your sponsor, your full team name is red, which is, includes your sponsors. And so that's a really great way for you to recognize any local sponsors. Um, but I would actually reserve that, though, for if they're donating quite a bit of money. Uh, so I wouldn't just list somebody maybe who donated $150, but but definitely for, for folks who've uh, donated uh, quite a bit of money. I did get a question where we're going to go over hotels. Uh, I, um, I certainly, I, that was not tonight. Um, we do have a call coming up. I think it's in two weeks. We've got um, gal from Carmel, who's going to kind of talk about how they do travel on the cheap or frugal. Um, and um, right now, the uh, on the the mentor update email uh, that went out last week, and it'll go out again this week. Um, we do have the links to uh, our block um, hotel rooms for our different events. So if you're going to Penn or Tippecanoe or whatever. Uh, those links are available for you to find where there are uh, blocked rooms. Um, if you have some specific questions about hotels, don't hesitate to ask me. I can, if I don't know the answer, I can help you find it. Um, and in terms of how to get uh, those rooms reserved. Uh, but anyway, I think that's it. So yeah, so uh, the hotel question, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to me directly. If you can't wait a couple weeks, um, give me a call or email me and we'll, uh, we can chat. Well, I appreciate everybody's time tonight. Uh, and uh, those, I, I again, the, the link um, to this document that I have, the, it is on the website. Um, I will post it um, in the mentor update email and uh, I'll send it out to those of you who attended and we'll go from there. I hope everybody has a great evening. Good luck, Golden Robots. We'll talk to you guys soon.